In this video we will learn how to cut uh, three-dimensional objects with two-dimensional planes and how to sub subtract them into pieces. Okay, we start with a simple object with uh, a sphere and I go to sphere and we do this with keyboard entry. I give this sphere a radius of 30 uh, centimeters and here's my sphere and um, the amount of segments is okay. I think 32 is already a nice and smooth sphere. And uh, the most important thing is that you uh, develop um, a two-dimensional shape which actually gives a nice cut. That's the main thing. And what we do next is we go to uh, shape and I will draw a line. And for this I will use my snap functions, right mouse click on this uh, snapping tool. And uh, normally I never use grid points, but in this time I work with this grid. I have it active and I draw a line along here. And um, okay, this is my line. Right mouse click, I close this line. I go into the substructure of this line into vertex points. Uh, I deselect my um, snap, uh, snap toggle tools, uh, select my point in the middle. And uh, then I can go to right mouse click, convert it to Bezier curve. And I can first click into the middle that I can move this in X and Y direction. We can see that I now can turn my curve in a way that it is already the beginning of uh, a shape which could produce a nice cut. Okay, in my viewport settings I would like to see this in top view and uh, front view. And we see this is my line and uh, my line I actually want to copy so it's uh, w not only a line so we produce a two-dimensional surface and we use uh, for this the cross-section modifier. Uh, move it down to uh, this point that I really can cut the surface. I hold my shift key and I move it up again and with this I produced a copy, not an instance, I just use copy and after using copy I attach this line to the other line uh, with my uh, attach tool, choose this line and now I have uh, two lines, uh, two splines in one line, spline number one, deselect my, uh, my attach, uh, so this is spline number one and this is spline number two and uh, this is uh, the basic functionality to add the cross um, uh, the cross section modifier which will connect these points we can already see this in uh, perspective and the only thing I, read no, no, I need right now is um, surface uh, surface modifier I just add um, my uh, surface modifier down here you can see it but now I just add it and so this is a good starting point. It still looks a little bit boring, so we will do way few thing, more things with these uh, uh, surface based on two lines. Okay, one thing I forgot to show, my line is nice and smooth because when I go down to line, I just uh, selected uh, adaptive. This means uh, this line does, uh, is uh, more smooth. If you don't uh, choose adaptive, you can change it with uh, with the steps, uh, it's definitely too much, but if I go to Adaptive 3D Studio twice to find the right amount of uh, segments uh, for producing this li nice line. Okay, let's switch on Show and Result Toggle on so I can work on my line level in my modifier menu and go to uh, Spline and I want to choose uh, the top spline, it's uh, this spline here this I would like to choose and then turn it around. I um, switch on my angle snap so I can t uh, control it in a better way. I just turn it to uh, 90 degrees. Okay, and uh, with this I have a nicely uh, uh, cut for my, um, for my sphere which is a little bit more interesting than uh, than before and the nice thing about this is if you use the cross section modifier you can still work on it and it's a really easy way to control. What I also do is I just see that the center of the object is uh, at the upper part. I just go to hierarchy, effect pivot point, 
center object and then I have it in the center and then I have a much easier way of turning it because if I turn it now it just turns to the middle and before it would just turn around the center which was actually uh, not in the middle right now. Okay, I make a copy of this object. Uh, I hold this object, my 2D plane, I hold uh, shift key and uh, move it to the right side and in this case I don't make a copy, I make an instance and uh, to have it a uh, uh, second time just next to the object and what I can do right now under compound objects uh, geometry compound objects I can choose my pro cutter which is a really nice tool because I can just use these spline and then for example choose uh, uh, the stock object and this is uh, by the way my sphere and we can just see what's happening we can see that my uh, two-dimensional shape cuts my object quite nicely. I can only see one side. Uh, this is the outside and now you can also see that I can switch on the inside and if you have both then it's connected like this in one object. If I add an edit poly um, modifier onto this uh, pull cutter then you can see if I go to elements that there's element number one I can just move it and element number two we can already see that it just closed the surface but everything is in one element if you don't want this you have to do the following step you um, uh, have to do the whole uh, cutting process again and you have to switch on auto extract mesh and explode by elements auto extract mesh means it already produces a new um, uh, a new object and explode by elements means uh, we really have uh, different kind of elements in, uh, um, as, as a result and uh, I will just show you um, how to do this. I just go to uh, this uh, menu and cut a parameters uh, stock and this is my sphere. I can go to extract selected and now my sphere is out again and uh, this time I switched on outside uh, cutter and inside cutter. It's important to uh, select auto extract mesh so it will create an own mesh object, important. And you have to switch on export by elements so every element is a new object. If we did this we can go to uh, pick stock object again. I choose my, uh, my um, sphere and we see what's happening. I can see that there are now two objects and they're already separated. I can move them and you can see that this already produced a nice cut. Okay, I go some steps uh, back because what I also want to show you to have a better understanding. Um, I can only work uh, in my pro cutter and continue uh, working on this and again I go into st uh, stock, stock objects when you uh, switch on explode by elements and auto extract mesh especially auto extract, extract mesh if I do this I can go into sphere and I can still change the radius of the sphere inside you can see what I'm doing and uh, I can also go and uh, choose my line and I can work on the shape of the line and what is also quite nice uh, that's why I show you the pro cutter we can have several objects which cut my stock objects my sphere and this is the next step we are doing right now I just take my object uh, this object I move uh, my, my second uh, spline I move it to uh, the left and also choose it as an instance and I will tilt it choose my uh, rotate um, menu and uh, uh, several options I can do it uh, when I switched on angle snaps by hand I just observe my a little uh, uh, menu here or can also say right, right mouse click and I can change it here and adjusting uh, adjust my um, my rotation angle okay uh, what is quite nice about the pro cutter is that I can choose my object again, my pro cutter object and I can go now to pick cutter objects and choose um, the second one and we just see that it just cuts uh, the second line off. 
If I choose my object on the left side, uh, which is uh, so far still an instance, we can see what we can do with this. We can, for example, go into line and go into segments, uh, into spline again. I choose this spline. And if I turn this spline, you can also see what's happening to the object. And you see that they're connected. And that they are just moving, they're still moving in my object just because uh, they are, um, I copied them as an instance. So it's also a little bit like a good control for my whole object. Okay, I want uh, this uh, to be um, a mesh object immediately with uh, different kind of uh, separated object pieces. So I just go to extract selected line, extract selected sphere. So I'm just uh, back to the beginning and I switch on outer extract mesh and explode by elements and go to pick cutter. That's my um, second cutting plane. So I have two as uh, cutting planes and then I choose my pick stock objects. This, my, this is my sphere. And we can see that this is already um, uh, cut and I can choose my cutting planes and say hide selection and we have a nicely cut sphere. Okay, this cutting you can do with every 3D object and with uh, several cutting planes, different concepts already produce mesh objects or just have it in this cutter and separate it afterwards. We just want to look as a last step how to provide this in different uh, pieces. And obviously what you can do is you can just take these pieces uh, uh, apart, move this a little bit. Uh, that's one way. You can also do it a little bit more advanced. You can use a little bit of gravity and 3D Studio Max and la let this object fall. And what I did is I moved this object in my z-axis a little bit higher because uh, x and y um, level is my zero plane and when I did this I can do something um, uh, really nice. I can uh, open my uh, right mouse click my mass F F uh, fx toolbar. Here we go and I open my Oh, I just uh, moved it into this uh, into this bar. I can move it obviously wherever I want to have it. This is uh, quite uh, quite nice. But uh, anyhow, I just open my uh, main menu, and if I open my main menu, you can already see there's gravity, uh, and uh, the ground height is zero. That's why I put this sphere a little bit higher, and uh, I can choose my sphere and all objects of my sphere. Just uh, press my H. Uh, uh, button and you can see a uh, keyboard that I key that I, I have four objects actually and I can just add them as as uh, wicked bodies if I add this button you can see that every object has a modifier like wicked uh, rigid body and I select them and what I see right now the last thing I have to do is I can choose my uh, ob uh, my menu multi object editor I select all of them, really important, and um, I have to choose the right shape for this. And a convex shape will not be uh, right because some of these uh, so objects are also concave. So I use concave. That's the most complex shape you can have in this kind of uh, um, physics. And when you press concave, you have to calculate the shape uh, under physical mesh. Uh, parameters, I click on generate and it really depends on the speed of your uh, computer. It can take some seconds. It can also probably take some minutes. So it's nice to have a coffee. With me it took some seconds and after I calculated this I can press uh, the button start simulating and we see what's happening. Uh, the thing is just falling down and just took it apart, uh, not by hand, just with my simulation tool. And of course, I don't want to have them lying on the floor like this. So what I could do is I can just start my simulation, stop this a, p a little bit earlier and say, this is my setting. Or what I can also definitely do is I can go into my um, simulation settings and I click on bake selected. These are the objects I selected. And now it's just calculating keyframes. 
Okay, it did it, and I just see what kind of keyframe I would like to use for my visualization, and you can see that it just takes the thing apart nicely, they don't intersect, and uh, that's just a different way of taking your things apart. A little bit of a gimmick, but sometimes really nice to play with physics in 3D Studio Max. Last thing for the people who are still watching, if you go to Unbake, uh, you can um, uh, change the settings slightly and what I did this concave is really important to this object you can choose the material actually which is really nice instead of uh, uh, the preset uh, you can go to uh, a rubber and if you see what this does I start my simulation and then it falls apart like uh, like uh, the objects built out of uh, out of rubber or I just choose it and then say it's uh, it's now a concrete and you can just see that the whole thing in terms of falling behaves slightly different because there's a different kind of friction and uh, uh, sorry friction and uh, mass behind uh, behind our geometry.